solving quadratic inequalities. It says solve each graph quadratic inequality. So since it's an inequality, there could be more than one answer. So we're looking for where this function okay, is greater than zero. So let's start off by graphing it. Remember, you can use Desmos to graph. Just search for it. It's a good graphing calculator. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. Let's do zoom six. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to find your roots. Because notice that above the zero, the graph is positive, okay? And below y equals zero, the graph is negative. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for, in this case, where it's less than zero, so we're looking for the negative portion of the function, okay? Notice there's no equal sign. So only the values below y equals zero. So we're going to need we're going to need our roots. So let's go ahead and look at our table. Let's see if they show them. They sure do. So there's one of the roots at three zero. So I'm going to go ahead and one, two, three, three zero. And then the other root. Let's see if it shows that one. Nope. So we're going to have to do our second trace, 0. And we're going to find the 1 over here on the left. Too far. Left bound, enter. Right bound, enter, enter. I guess, oh, you know what? I went the wrong way. Uh, Let's see if it shows the other one. Yep, there it is. Negative two zero. And it even shows us, nope, doesn't quite show us the vertex. The vertex is going to be between the two negative sixes, so it looks like it's going to be a half. Let's just verify that. It's a minimum. Enter, 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 and yep, at a half, it's negative 6.25. So, sketching a graph here, notice my three points. Got my vertex, I got my two zeros. Okay, so on our sine graph, we're going to divvy this up into three parts. We got a positive part here from negative infinity to negative two. And then from negative two to three. And then from three to infinity. So from negative infinity to negative two, the graph is above y equals zero. So the value of the function is positive. Down here, it's negative and then we're positive again. So notice here, okay, this represents f of x, which is y. So we're looking for where is the value greater than this line right here, y equals zero, okay? Well, it's gonna be greater than, I'm sorry, less than below. So we're gonna go from negative two to three. And there's no equal, so no equal here, because those will give you a value less than zero. Now let's take a look at our table so we can look at the values. So for example, if I choose negative three, so negative three, okay, if I plug negative three in for x, will my value be less than zero? No. If I plug in negative 2 in for x, will my value be 
less than zero? No. Negative one. Plug negative one in for x. Will my value be less than zero? Yes. So notice my solution is falling between negative two and three. Okay, let's take a look at number two. Well, number two is the same function, but we're looking for where does the function value fall greater than zero. So again, we have our roots at negative two and three. And sketching my graph. So greater than, that's going to be above the y equals zero graph line. So we're looking at, I'm doing my sine graph again. positive, negative, under zero, positive. Okay, so we're looking for where it's greater than zero, that would be our positive number. So we're looking at going from negative infinity to negative two. Now I'm gonna use parentheses, I'm gonna go ahead and use interval notation. This was inequality notation. I'm gonna go ahead and use interval. And so it's going to be this and then I'm going to use the U for union. We're going to include 3 to infinity on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at number 3. First thing we want to do is take a look at the graph. Okay, I'm going to go zoom six on that. So let's take a look at our roots. It looks like we have a root at negative three, zero, and then at a half, maybe. Let's see, negative three, zero, and then maybe another one at a half. Let's find out. Second calc, zero, left to bound, right bound, enter. Yep a half. And we'll find one more point. So let's do our maximum. We've got a maximum of 6.125. And we're up in this area. Not that important for what we want to do right now, so we're just going to sketch that. So, sine graph. So going from negative infinity to negative 3. Negative 3 to a half. And a half to infinity. So over here, the graph is negative. In here, the graph is positive. And over here, the graph is negative. So now we want to know where is the function greater than zero. So we're looking for the positive. So obviously, it's going to be between these two points. And we're going to include them because of the equal sign. Let me repeat that. We're going to include them because of the equal sign. So we're going to go from negative 3. I'm going to go ahead and just use inequality notation here seems to be the easiest. Or interval. Okay, move on. Number four. Now personally, you could plug this into your calculator, um, this into y1 and this into y2, but I'm going to go ahead and add one on both sides and so this is going to be the function that I'm going to solve. Okay, so again I'm going to zoom six. Let's 
standard window. Um, eyeballing it looks like a little bit bigger than zero. Eyeballing it maybe two, maybe a little less than two. So let's go ahead and calculate the zeros. So 0.18 approximately. Calculate the other one. Okay, 1.8. I'm just going to round them, get the idea. And so it's going to kind of go like this. Now, we're looking for where is the function less than or equal to zero. So obviously we're looking for where the function is negative. Okay, so it's positive here, it's negative down here, and it's positive up here. Okay, we're all comparing it to zero. That's your line y equals zero right here. So everything below will give you a function value of zero, I mean of a negative number, excuse me. So we have the equal sign. So now I know these are approximate answers. There you go. All right. If you can use Desmos, if you don't have a graphic calculator, and see if you can get the answer to number five. We'll see you in class.